Hello, hello, everyone. How are you? So today I'm going live with Leslie. Hi, Leslie. Hello. Hello, everybody. How are you? I'm doing well. I keep expecting people to answer, but ah, they're, yeah. not, they're not going the to, are they? To <laughs> <laughs> I'm... All right. So we are doing as if we were not talking before. But... <laughs> right. That's right. All right. So today we are painting this cute bird house. And I wish my birds had this kind of house in my garden. And I will be doing it with gouache. And Leslie, what are you using today for painting? Do you know what? I know you advertise me as using watercolors. So I, I want to make people happy in case they logged in to see watercolors. So I have, this is my watercolor set that I use probably the most often, although I've changed a few colors. It's just, um, I know, ignore that it says it's Schmincke because it's really Windsor and Newton watercolors in here. I just got the tin. Um, for sale. But I also am thinking that I might like to use these um, charcoal paint pens, which give a very soft, pretty feeling like this. And um, and they might be something different that people haven't seen. So maybe if anybody is interested in those, they could tell us in the comments and then that'll help make my decision. But my style is first I go in with um, with ink, and I can show you a, an example of that. So here's um, a watercolor that I haven't finished yet. This is just the ink portion. And after I do the ink, then I add watercolor, usually like this. And if I make a mistake, sometimes I'll add a bit of gouache. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm thinking for that one, but these these take a lot longer than we have today, and yeah. you know you know there's a real ugly stage as I'm sure most people watching might know with watercolor not necessarily ugly but just unfinished stage, um, and uh, the detail that I put in usually takes quite a while. So I'm thinking for simplicity's sake, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But I, so I start by inking in the draw. Well, I start with a sketch and then I ink everything in. And I'm using Unipin fine liners. They're water and fade proof, allegedly. Um, I've not used these before, this particular <laughs> brand. So it's, this, is, this is not my normal one, but I'll try to add, you know, some texture and some value with the ink um, because I just, I love drawing. And yeah. then I'll come in with the paint. So how did you make your, your first sketch? Did you trace or did you draw? I drew it freehand twice. Okay. And so I it's a mess. Um, and hopefully the watercolor will. And you didn't today, correct? No, I'm used to trace when I'm going live just because I think um, we don't have too much time to watch me drawing. It's no, that's watch. smart because look, I can already see here that, yeah, it was, I had it moved over too much. Yeah, so I have been tracing and just um, main shapes because I don't bother about drawing the flowers. I will make them at the very end on top of everything. So I don't need to draw them because they will be covered by yes. the paint anyway. Yeah. Okay, so everyone watching, uh, if you have questions, please don't hesitate, type them in the chat. And I see that Gray seems interested by the charcoal paint. Yeah, because it's a bit different from what we are used to see. So that might be interesting. Oh, look at you, you're already going in with paint. Yes, because I want to place a kind of dark background because I feel that the house is really well cut out by the negative shape around so i want to cover everything with a mix of different greens dark ones so right. that are lighter Doesn't so i show... think that in my experience with gouache and I'm, you're more experienced with it than i am um 
but it's similar to oils in that you you go in with the darks and you can add the lights on top. Is that, yeah, is that or you can correct? do the other way around. Right, it's versatile. Yeah, really, really, very, very style. That's what I love about gouache because you can do really whatever you want with it. Right. Okay, so and I know I'm, that Ray is Do you see questions? Because wait, I don't see comments. Let me, I think I was, oh, there they are. Oh, look, there's people. Hello, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Shirley. Hello, okay. Stream is StreamYard a person or is that just like, is no, that just StreamYard YouTube? is not a person, it's me. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, hello you. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like I should maybe set a timer and make myself draw a bit more quickly than I normally would. As you wish. So, so I can get in with the paint. And wish. I was going to do this before we logged on and Cecile very cleverly said maybe I should wait because maybe people would be interested. But I like to use masking fluid and I particularly like to use this masking fluid pen, which is uh, a Molotov. I mean, it's, its technical name is an art masking liquid pump marker. And I use the smallest one that I can find, which is a two millimeter. But what I'll do with this is areas that I really want to preserve, I'll, I'll just mark out so that I don't accidentally paint over them. So I would like to um, do these little floors right here. Um, and I think maybe these pink flowers and a little bit of the white just in case, um, in case it, it goes crazy. But I can show people, I'm assuming somebody might want to know how it works, yep. but um, you have to shake it. And then you have to pump it. And I always recommend doing it on um, a spare piece of paper instead of first, just to make yeah. sure that it's that it's working. So now I'm going to go in and just just draw where in. you want to preserve. The yeah, white pretty paper. much. And these are not drawn perfectly, but and sometimes I find doing it a little bit thicker is better for removing it. If I do it too thin, sometimes it's more difficult. Okay. To remove. I have ordered one after seeing your TikTok after about seeing it. My, well, good. I hope you like it. I hope you're not. Yeah, I will tell you. <laughs> I hope you're not disappointed. Somebody left me a comment and said, I bought it and it ruined my painting. And I thought, oh no. Uh, um, Cause I've never had it. anything but good experiences, but I did have a bad experience once with it. So, but I think that can happen with any masking fluid, to be honest. Yes. Um, yeah. I used to have one with uh, a little pot, but you needed a, a brush to apply it. And then you have to clean the brush very, very well because it's ruined. Yeah. Otherwise. Right. So do you I ever use it? A... Oh, yeah. This is, I mean, it's not as, you can't do the fine lines because. You know, you're restricted by this size, but um, I think I'm. I think that's all I'm gonna need. Maybe I'll put in just a few of these so I can. Just a suggestion of some of this. I th what is it, Queen Anne's lace? What do you call this? What do you call this in France? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. White flowers. <laughs> yeah, white flowers. That's great. Um, I think one they are. Uh, Uye. 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 Yeah. I don't know how you call them. I think it's a carnation, but. Yeah, that's it. So yeah. Someone's probably going to tell me, and I don't know my flowers, and they'd be correct. Um, but, but the it white looks, one. It, it looks a bit like a carnation. And the, and the white looks like, I guess, in America, we'd call it Queen Anne's lace. And in England, where I live, I have no idea what they call it here. Um, <laughs> so I can't. I, I can ask I think later. That's so funny that you have different words between USA and UK. Oh, that's completely. Was, moving here was like, yeah, divided by a common language is what my husband, you know, likes to say. He's British, so. Mm -hmm. So I had lots of practice before living here because because we lived in upstate New York before we moved here. Okay. And and he and he had problems, especially if we were 
building or doing home improvement projects because those those words are very very different oh really mm, yeah okay all right so i'm done with my background i think because i might change my mind it's very dark on purpose because i want the, fl the flowers and the leaves on top to be lighter i have defined the shape of the birdhouse and now i'm ready to go inside the birdhouse so let's make a green juice first when cleaning my brush. Yeah, it's very green. <laughs> so you are drawing the dark shade, the dark part with the pen. Leslie, did we? Did oh, we yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were instructing people. I was zoning out here. So I'm, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? <laughs> uh, I'm a bad live streamer. <laughs> no problem. Uh, no, I was saying you are drawing the dark parts with, uh, with a pen. I am. I'm using the 0.5 for this. Okay. Um, and I might regret it. But so this is a kind of a cross hatching? A bit. Yeah, more of um, maybe sometimes a very little bit, but I think more than that, it's just um, a combination of different line styles. So uh, I'll do different types of shading, and sometimes they'll be, sometimes that'll be, or it'll look like um, hatching or cross hatching. I tend to, I think, hatch more than cross hatch, but yeah. Okay, so I, I'm just showing my palette for a while. I'm using my trusty, loved airtight palette. This is really the best investment you can do when you are painting with gouache because you can store your paint in the little wells and you can mix on the lid here. And I store this. Uh, airtight palette in the fridge so the paint is always fresh you just have to spray it a bit before using it and you're good to go and does that make a big difference then keeping it in the fridge oh yeah because when it's hot it's not inside the fridge no that's yeah right and um, also it's always the same temperature so i think it's important for gouache not to have some variation yeah, I have one of those um, airtight palettes. See, I already made a mistake. That's okay. Ah. Do you know, I, I don't know if you've heard this, but this is something um, when I taught that I always said is just make your mistakes work for you. Yes. So I have this great. pen, a jelly roll pen, and I'm gonna, I might regret this. Uh huh. Yes, might not the work. light one. Mm -hmm. I have it. I think everyone has it. Yeah. It's very common. It's not working very well here on top. Eh, I'll leave it. Uh, Gray is asking, won't the nib of your pen be ruined? Which one? The white one? No. This one? Oh, did he say pen? Or yeah. pen? pen. No, they won't. In fact, um, I can get a lot of use out of them. And I don't uh, draw on the tip. I draw on the side, more like if, more like it's a pencil. Okay. Uh, like I'm doing now, just to try to get some texture. And then, no, I mean they last a really long time, surprisingly. Although I, I do. That said, disclaimer: I like to work tiny, <laughs> so. So maybe if I was doing huge paintings, I'd have to replace them more, but mm. yeah, I'm just, sense. for me now, I'm just, I like to take some of these textural qualities or elements and put them in a little bit with the pen first or some of the shadows, and then I'll revisit that. Um, this is not the normal pen that I use. I think I mentioned, and it's a lot darker. It's a bit, I look at it on that camera, it looks intense. 
Yeah, but the camera is not accurate to the real color. So yeah. don't, don't bother. It's, pretty, it's, not, it's not too dissimilar. Okay, so I'm trying to find the color of the paint on the birdhouse and it's it's a kind of very pale color with a lot of white. It's very desaturated. It's very difficult to find actually. It's a beautiful color, isn't it? Yeah, but it's quite tricky pale, to find it. Pale greenish, yeah. Pale greenish, but with gray, with mm, yeah. brown. And yellows. Pictures. And also I want it to stand out from the background. So it's a lot of things to consider. Oh, we can hear your pen. <laughs> That's great. ASMR here, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like to, when I do my videos um, on TikTok, I usually add music and try to sync it to the music. But then when I post them on Instagram, I, I usually strip all the music. Yeah, because just... they don't have the same music on both. Well, no, it's not even that. I just want them to be slightly different because okay. I'm sure I'm sure it's the same for you. You follow people on more than one platform. You don't want to see the exact same thing over and over and over again. Yes, um, sometimes. But a lot of people aren't on TikTok, so. Um, yeah, so this pale green is here. And it's, um, I want the different shapes to be really visible. Oh, thank you, Archana. And Archana is here and we are going live together next week. <laughs> she will oh, be lovely. Coming with gouache so we will have two different styles with the same medium sure of that, course that will be fun and we will be painting an old portrait that would be really fun you'll be painting a portrait nice yeah but it's an old portrait oh, okay yeah it's kind of different than the people <laughs> all right so gray so, said that he was interested in the um charcoal paint pan so i'm going to take that as a sign that that's what I should do, even though that that's what I wanted to do as well. So thank you, Gray. <laughs> you fell into my trap. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yes, you're female. Yes. Me? Um, no, Gray. <laughs> oh, Gray. Okay. Did I say I must have said he? No, I Sorry, don't know. Gray. I don't know, it's a it's, uh, common mistake when you just have a small, tiny image. You oh, I know. People it. people think I'm a man a lot because I use, um, sometimes on my videos, I use that AI voice that, you know, the male uh, talking. Yeah, get that. I don't mind. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm now placing some shadows because there is a lot of shadows in this house, actually. Mm -hmm. more than you would think it's a beautiful image where did you find this image oh it's on unsplash oh right okay it's a great resource i use it all the time especially for the lives because i don't want to have any issue with copyright well of course yeah and when you're going to be streaming or sharing things online yeah it's better to be safe than sorry So I'm assuming can, people can see the reference image. Yes, they can download it in the okay. description. Should I give them a peek just in case they forgot? Oh, yeah, it's on the cover so, of the live oops. stream. Oh, well, that's terrible quality. Well, it doesn't look like that. Never mind. That's a bad <laughs> idea. Sharing a screen on a screen didn't quite work. Oh, yeah, it's very dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> here, here it is. I have it on. Paper. Oh, yeah, lovely. I always print it on paper because I'm tracing, so I need it at the correct size on paper. Oh, I love that. I love that you're holding that up because it's it's much easier to see. And it's better if you can see where you are going. Yeah. It's it showed me what I need to pump up here more with shadows. 
I like to be a little um, imperfect in my drawings. I used to, well, I used to teach at a university in America, well, a few different ones, um, but most recently. And what uh, did you teach? Art? Um, I taught art. I taught oil painting and drawing. Oh, and, um And I was, with drawing, people really wanted to learn photo. Like I I was sort of known for my, not photorealistic portraits, but very realistic portraits. Um, okay. And, and I, I just, I, when I moved to England in 2014, I just, I don't know, fell in love with the landscape. It's really love, um, painting landscapes and so I've really moved away a lot from portraiture although okay. I still find that's what people want to learn <laughs> if I when I teach a class people really want to learn that but but yeah there's something that I like about being imperfect after all those years of trying to be perfect and I find that I think it's more characerful if I'm Less yeah, than more lively. Yeah. I took during um during the first lockdown, I was I was sick. I actually had um, coronavirus at the beginning, so I was sick for three months when everybody was kind of learning technology and stuff like that. I was just in bed. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, but I found a, the great opportunity to take some online classes with some of my colleagues who I really admired. And there was this one artist whose work that I love, her name is Kathy Odom, O-D-O-M. And I realized after, I, I just, I wouldn't paint along or anything. I just would watch <laughs> and try to just learn, take notes. Um, but I noticed that the things that she drew that I loved that were so charming were wildly different. Like angles were wrong, sizes were different. Um, and it just gave me a lot of permission to be, you know, true to the rules of perspective, but also feeling free to take the leeway where I needed to or where I wanted to, or not panicking. I think that's a thing, especially for people. You probably see this too, Cecile, but um, when people are new, they, they panic, right? <laughs> um, if they make a mistake yeah. and think they've ruined it. And sometimes you know, those mistakes are opportunities. Yeah, just happy accident, as was saying, Barbara. Right, there you go. And we have a question. So Do you use acrylic wash? That's for you. Yeah, but who are you asking the question? I think they're, oh, I think they're asking you because you're using gouache, but. Okay, well, I hate acrylic gouache. Yeah. That's yes, it. I do too. And I just made a video can find it on my youtube channel about what is exactly acrylic gouache it's and should you use it <laughs> and actually acrylic gouache is not gouache no yeah i agree i agree 100 percent. it's really ah. yeah, yeah. And, uh himi gouache yeah i used to hate himi gouache i bought a set of himi gouache maybe two months ago I wanted to test it, as everyone was saying, oh, this is great. But uh, at first, I really hated it. Now, I'm, I'm a bit less hatred about it. But it's not still love, but it's becoming better. You just have two things that you cannot blend with it. And once yeah. you know that... The Hemi gouache is, is acrylic gouache, isn't it? No, no, it's regular. Gouache. Do they have regular? Okay. Yeah, but it's a very cheap quality. It's yeah. very, it's very cheap to buy, but it's also not so good cheap. quality, yeah. as you can I, expect from the price. Yeah, of course. I I think my experience has been that um, cheaper uh, watercolors can often do more than a cheaper gouache. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. But you can still paint with Himi gouache. I don't want to be so dramatic about it. Right. Um, but um, 
if you want to blend, it's a nightmare. There is no, no other way to say it. It's a nightmare. And I blend a lot, actually, so it's not what I want to use. And so, Cecile, she... how long have you been using gouache? Was this, did you have a medium before that you liked? Uh, actually, um, my first training is art school right. when I was um, 19, 20, so <laughs> a long time ago. And um, I was using almost everything, but we used mainly acrylic in school. Oh, really? Don't okay. Ask me why. I don't know. We never used oil in school. Never. Wow. Um, That's yeah. unusual. Yes. I don't know. It was a very modern art school, I think. Well, that's true. Yeah. So did you different... did you like did you like acrylics? Um. Yeah, acrylics are, are okay, but it's not my fave. No. And we didn't use gouache at all. And actually, I stopped painting for a long time, and I got back to it maybe five years ago now. And the first thing I did was buying an iPad because I wanted to test um, digital art, and right. I loved it. I've been painting a lot with my iPad doing a lot of classes about portraits in Procreate. It was a lot of fun. And then one day, I don't know why, I bought a set of gouache. But don't ask me why, I don't remember. And I fell in love. Just right. just two minutes, I opened it. It's everything you, everything I love is in gouache. Yeah, I, I, I love gouache too. Yeah. I feel Some like gouache is love... like, it's like if watercolors and oils had a baby, it would be yeah. gouache. And acrylic also, so it's uh, three parts. <laughs> right. There is a bit of acrylic as well. I don't, I, don't, I don't see the similarities to acrylic as much because of the, you know, the blending. Oh, yeah. But well, you can use a uh, medium to extend the drying time. That's true. Acrylic. And you will get almost the same thing because they are not so shiny now, the acrylics. Like okay, my, to be. sorry, my webcam I've noticed is very dark. So I'm going to Oh yeah. try to add some light here. Tell me if this is any better or if uh, I need to change no, still, my, oh yeah. Change yeah. my saturation or is that better? It seems better, but you know. Oh, no, it's not good enough. With the lag, I don't know where you are. It looks like this house is quite monochromatic. I need to get something a bit different now. Well, that's oh, that's not good. Too late. That's worse. Yeah. You had a problem because we made the settings before. Yeah. Well, the light is changing. I may, I'm making the mistake of using natural light. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I have a lot of But stuff. I can, I have another light I can turn on as well. <sighs> How is that? Well, at the second I'm seeing the screen, it's okay, but maybe you have moved it since. Yeah, it seems fine. What do you think, people? Just right. Okay. Don't no, touch I think I made anymore. it too dark now. Ah, stop moving. <laughs> Now it's too dark. Is it too dark? Ah, stop. Don't touch anymore. Okay. I should do it. Gray will tell me <laughs> <laughs> if it's no good. Just paint. Yes. Just paint. <laughs> yes. I'm going to use, I'm going to go in with these charcoal paint pens because why not? So these are made by Derwent and these are the colors. And I've used them before. And I find that they're um, very dry to use. They're not similar to watercolors in that sense. And they, but you know, they're exactly what they sound like. They're like, a tr they're like if you were painting with charcoal. Oh, it's, Maybe it's powdered charcoal pigment. It is. It's a it's powdered charcoal. Well, I mean, 
all paint is, isn't it? It's got some kind of medium mixed in. And I think I'm gonna do some tests on paper a little bit to get. So I think I want to get something a bit more yellow. Oh, I think I'm gonna do a combination because I... Hmm. What are you up to? I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go for it. I want to add some of this. There's some yellow undertones that I really like that they don't make in the. So I'm just going to go in, add a little bit of watercolor before I go in with the charcoal. Sometimes Gray says she wets the charcoal for effects. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. So we are focused. Hmm. Well, it's nice to do this together because the one time that I did a live before in my life, I, I just felt like I had to talk the whole time. <laughs> yeah, this is why I love. Well, do you know, you know what I, you know what I mean, like in a, oh, yeah. in an artificial way, and it's <laughs> nice to share it and to have a conversation. Yeah, it's easier for us, and it's more fun for people, I think. Yeah. Okay. We were talking before the live and I said that the great thing for me with this live session is that it makes me do something, paint something, instead of just staying on the couch and scrolling through TikTok or whatever. Yeah. That's a good thing. I do too much of that too. Yeah, it's a trap. Once you get inside you, it's a rabbit hole. So now this is the um, this is the charcoal that I'm using the paint pans. Okay. And you are diluting in a small. Process. Yeah, I have just a little. So I'll, I'm just taking it and putting it in here and deciding how much water I want to add. And I've got my touches of yellow. I know that's not really yellow, but I want it to be a bit. Not very and... colorful. TikTok holes are real. Yes. And actually, you know that they have people that are paid just to make it more addictive. That's something when you think about it. Oh, I think they all do that, though, don't you? Oh, yeah, but TikTok are the best for this, I think. Yeah, well, they're doing a good job at it. <laughs> you have a question. Leslie. Making it addictive. What's that? You have a question on the Oh, live. how is it different than using watercolor pans? It's, um, I'm looking right now quickly because I know I did some color charts of it and I can show you, but with watercolor, it's, it's got a very easy flow and I find that the, the, and painting with charcoal is very similar to these charcoal paint pans in that it's just a bit chalkier. So you don't get the same um, kind of flow. It's a little bit stiffer. You need to really work at it or add a lot of water to dilute it and it won't move as quickly, if that makes sense. Sorry, I've stepped off screen for a minute. I've stopped I'm looking to see if I can find a sample to show everybody, but I don't think I I don't think I have it handy. I'm not talking, but I'm painting. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's why yours is that's why yours is looking more complete and mine is not. no it's because so gouache. it has these different it yet yeah, it has these different colors that i'm i'm just trying to oh, i might as well show you what i'm doing everybody so this is i'll, I'll make a little swatches and then we'll know what we're dealing with so this is good because they're as you can see they're really difficult to tell what color they are it's not so they're different than watercolor in that way so this one it's called glowing embers and that's really pretty and this is dark moss which i like are the is the variation showing up mm, a bit just, but it's it's very subtle yeah i think maybe i need to play with my settings because that is more purple let me go it's very delicate actually so crystal is asking does the paper get too wet um i'm not sure i understand your question i can think you... for you maybe yeah i don't know can you be more specific crystal maybe I want to go a bit more yellow in the door. The door below seems to be quite yellowish. Yes. I think you can see the colors a little better now. I just changed some of the some of the settings. This one's called driftwood. Burnt earth. Yours is looking beautiful over there, Cecile. Mm, thanks. I keep the texture for the end. So, um, Leslie, another question for you. Leslie, what kind of paper are you using? Um, I am using um, Arches Cold Press, 300, um, 300 grams, or GSMs. I guess it's not grams. No. And we had fun before because uh, the brand she's using is French and the name in French. <laughs> <laughs> right. Is I, I can't do it. I tried. I Actually, I, did I even try, Cecile? I think I, I didn't. I think I bowed out in shame. No, never mind. It's Arche. Uh, Arche. 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 Yes. Very, 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 Arche. Very, 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 very. Arche. Oh, Arche. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, it's a small town, small village. Uh, not far from when, from where I've been growing, and um, I've been visiting the factory several times. It's very interesting to visit. I'm imagining that it's less expensive there because it's no, 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 same price. No, you don't think <laughs> it's a very expensive paper, but it's the one I love also because so I somebody almost... asked a question. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm all. I'm also painting on. Watercolor paper, but it's another French brand. It's Clairefontaine. Um, it's less expensive, but it's it's fine for uh, for gouache. You don't really need a fancy watercolor paper for gouache. Yeah, you you really do for watercolor. I think. Yeah, it makes a huge difference with watercolor, but not completely. I so, like 300 GSM as well because yeah. it's very firm and steady. So here's a difference. Between, you can see how it really doesn't get dark. You would think that it's charcoal and it would be darker, but I'm, I really have to build layers. Oh, yeah, really? If you want to get dark, you have to put how many layers? I don't know. We'll find out. But look, I mean, that background is quite dark and we're not even close to that. Oh, yeah. Whereas I know if I went in with like a Payne's Gray or if I mixed, you know, Burnt Sienna with Ultramarine, I, I could get really dark. And I might, um, you know, I might just play around with it. I, although I do like, and I'm mixing two colors. I'm mixing the color called Thistle and then Dark. Oh, yeah, I see. So question, is it Hot Press what, that you are using, Leslie? 
Aha, uh -huh. we have lost Leslie, I think. Leslie, are you there? No, I think she's lost. Oh, Where is that she? me who was lost? I thought it was you. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah, back. no, it was you. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about um, that. Well, my, hus my husband's a musician and he uses the internet a lot for uh, uploading things. So maybe he was, maybe he was overloading our system. So apologies. Uh -huh. I think what I was saying is I'm using two colors and just um, varying how much of each one I use just to give an idea of like a misty background that, you know, the way backgrounds are, they're not going to be a solid color, are they? Yeah, of course. And the question was, do you use hot press? Paper? I love hot press. This is cold press this time, but hot press is uh, probably my favorite. Although I have been using a lot of, um, a lot of cold press lately. Yeah. I'm so sure I have this, well, I have this little tiny sketchbook and mm -hmm. um, this paper on here, you can, I don't know if you can see, but it's, it's a nice cold press texture it's, and it's. This one is so tiny. I don't know how you can I mean, bring this, this small. It really? gets hard when I do things like that, where I have like a little scene, but um, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And you can see you what Leslie is doing on her Instagram or on TikTok if you are on TikTok, but she has Instagram as well. And it's Leslie Stroh's art. You will find it, I think, in the description. I think uh, um, I think I'm just Leslie Str I don't know what I am. I, I think Leslie Stroh's, you'll find me. It's not a common yeah, name. I'm sure you can find her because she's painting so small. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> it's too difficult for me. I think I'm going to go in with a bit of, I think I'm going to go in with a bit of watercolor. I don't, uh -huh, I don't really, changing your mind. well, I don't have the right, I'm doing a mix media, but I don't really have the right green. Maybe I'll add a little bit of this green in the shadows. No problem. You're the artist. I'll put this, if, if I finish this and it's not hideous, I'll put it on my, <laughs> I'll put it on my Instagram. Yeah, sure. When it when it's done, but it's just I'm really just trying to uh, play around with the materials. Yeah, have fun. That's the most important. So I've switched like to a smaller brush now because I want to add some textures, and this is with. Um, a very dry brush, actually. It's so so dry that I have to reload it very frequently. I wish I could stop, and I'll have to watch the playback because I love what mm. you're doing. You guess you'll have to watch the replay. I I will. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird when you hear yourself talking. <laughs> Yeah, in real time, as opposed to, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the one I'm using is hot press. Yes, what is it? I don't know. No, it's cold press. But there is not too much texture. Do you prepare your paper ever with gesso or do you just go straight in? No, I go straight in. And I always paint directly on paper. Sometimes I can add a background with a layer of acrylic. If if I'm painting something else and I have a, I don't know, a brush to clean, I can clean it on some random page in my sketchbook and it will make a background for something. That's cool. Here's a difference between watercolor Yes, miniature. Yeah, miniature painting is easier with hot press. That's true. Um, but I'm kind of I'm enjoying the imperfections that come with it with that with the cold press. Because um, that sketchbook that I've been using is a is a cold press and it's a mix. It's a I don't. It came from Russia, so I have no idea what brand it is. 
but I asked the person who gave it to me and she said that it's um, a cotton blend. So it's like 50% cotton. Yeah, they have a lot of art supplies in Russia too. Great art supplies. Yeah. So a, so a difference between this charcoal that I'm noticing is it leaves a charcoal kind of film on the paper. Oh. So it gets to, um, let me see if I can. It's just, it's more, it's much more pigmented and a bit messy than, yeah, you have a lot watercolors of would be. Yeah. But that's all right. It's different. Yeah. Different is good. But for variety of color, I'm not, I'm not really going to get much of it. It's difficult to figure the texture without having it um, confused with a shadow. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm trying it does. to make where the paint is um, removed and you see the, the bare wood, but it looks like it's shadow. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Just want to add a bit more interest to it because it's a bit boring so far. See that. Hmm. In real life, this is a bit brighter than it's showing up, but uh, I don't bother too much about camera because really it's eating the colors. I don't know. There's something kind of weird about it. But that's the feeling I have, like it's really eating the color. I don't know how to say. Yeah. Oh, I'm using true black. Oh my gosh. Something that I barely do. Don't like black usually. But the hole in the middle, I think it deserves black. It's dark, yeah. I'm trying to be more abstract with these flowers just because of our time. Oh, uh, yeah. What That's time? Great. Oh, 47. Yeah, I think that would be great. Well, I mean, I'm not. Yeah, we can do it. I've got nothing on my calendar, so I'm not rushing off. But I'm just saying it would be nice for people who do have things on their calendar and at the end yeah, of the but... stream for them to see some results, <laughs> even if they're incomplete, at least to see some beginnings yeah, of results. Yeah, can still watch the replay. Don't bother too much. Oh, that's true. I was concerned about this at the first uh, live streams. Yeah. But then someone told me, you know, if I want to leave, I can. Okay. That's true. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, I just want to make a texture check. This is something I like to do is adding, lifting my paint close to the camera. Oh, so it's gorgeous. See. Absolutely see gorgeous. The rust, the texture, everything. Thank you. Um, My palette is messy. I, I think I'm a messy artist, actually. That's okay. Is your studio messy? Um, <laughs> do you care? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. Actually, it's a complete room just for this. So you can place the mess you want. No one cares. Right. Um, I like to be surrounded by I don't know, things on the wall. Sure. Supplies and maybe things you want to keep it. Yes, you can. 
<laughs> Sweep it on the other rug. There is no rug in my studio because I, I drip sometimes. I drip a lot with oil painting. Um, mm. ah, the floor is not happy. My husband is not either, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> All right, I'm trying to be loose, very loose for the textures. Me too. So Shirley is asking, if you weren't doing a class, how long on average would each of you usually take to draw and paint a picture? Oh, it depends on the difficulty of the picture. This one I'm rushing a bit, but it's one hour and a half maybe for this one, for example. A portrait can take longer. I want to show you my last portrait I did yesterday. Not really the subject of today, but never mind. There she is. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Is that, and this... is that in keeping with what you're planning to do next week? Mm -hmm. There will be a video about it next week. Um, this one took one hour and a half. And from drawing to finishing. But right. It depends really on the... So I won't show you everything today. It's not the day for that. <laughs> Let's go back to the house. It's a little <laughs> teaser for next week. Yeah, actually, I've been testing uh, the Schmink Oradam paint uh, recently. And a lot of people told me that Holbein was a great gouache as well. And I have tested Holbein. Uh, flip book video, great. Yes, I will when the sketchbook is finished. Not quite. This one takes a long time because it's a large one. It's A4 size. Um, uh, yeah, takes a long time. Do you like the whole bind? Aha, you have to watch the video. Oh, okay. No, no <laughs> teaser, no, um, no, no spoilers, spoilers, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think I could add a bit of flowers now because it's a bit too same color everywhere. Kind of bother me. I need to add a bit of pink in this. Hmm, there is a strange color here. I don't know what it is. So how are you doing? Oh yeah, you've been adding color. I haven't. Yeah, I'm trying to play with my settings a bit to make it look more like what I'm seeing. Oh, good luck with that. That actually probably makes it look worse. There is a shadow on the door that I forgot. And also this part here is a bit too light. It needs to be dark and... Colors are difficult to find, I think, in this image. No, it's not dark enough. So beside Gray, who's who's painting along with us? Oh, are people painting how lovely? Will they post them someplace? Yes. Aha. Actually, I have a um, Facebook group that, that is called Gouache Painters. So original. And a lot of people are posting in there or on Instagram. Don't forget to tag us when you post it. Oh, yes, Gray, I know you're in the group. Hello, Loretta. 
Loretta, you're Italian, maybe? With a name like this, looks like it's Italian. Si, Italiana. I've spent 10 days in Firenze last year for a painting workshop. That was really amazing. I loved it. Oh, thank you, Achara. I love painting textures. This is something really, I don't know, maybe this is what I prefer. Textures are so cool to do with gouache. Very true. Yeah, with, with oil as well, but not for today. Okay, I said I wanted to paint some flowers. Do we have a hashtag? No, I don't have a hashtag, so I'm sorry, but it's um, mine is at Cecile Yadro. All right, and Leslie, I don't remember. Leslie. I do Leslie Strozart as a hashtag. Yeah. Oh, you have a hashtag. All right. I do. I mean, I use it on all my stuff, so. Leslie Strozart. You look if it's okay for you, the way it's written. Oh, it's right here. And then add art. Okay. Did I say flowers? Yes, I did. Um, don't know for you, but when I'm painting, I see a lot of things to paint and I'm just like a butterfly from one to another and forgetting about the first one and going back to the second. Never ending story. Yeah, pink flowers. <laughs> I'm trying to, to fake them a bit, but normally I'd spend a bit more time on. Just give a little bit of an impression. Yeah, impression is a good word. Pink flowers. Yes, yes, yes. Let's go. Let's go for pink flowers. Mm. Just have some values to fix here and there. And I'm good to go for flowers. I've sort of um, abandoned the charcoals for now. Uh, oh yeah, there's, a lot of They're still there underneath. It's making it a little weird to paint on top of, but, um, but I like it. So you are experimenting if I... That's um, right. I like to do that. I don't do enough of it. Yeah, same. I love to experiment. And sometimes it's great to just change your medium and you have a fresh view on something. Okay, so that was beautiful. I could never get the hang of watercolor. I still play with it. Yeah, I think... Watercolor is much more difficult than gouache. I'm just completely. My... I know, I'm thinking like, I you're making me want to get my gouache out and just add some stuff, but I'm not going to. I'm going to stick with it. Why not? I, I find that watercolor is just, it's a long game, you know? It's, oh, yeah. And that's why um, when I do plein air, especially when I do plein air watercolor, I... Um, really rely on an armature of a drawing first so that I, so that, I don't know. So the watercolor is more forgiving. So I think I showed that before, but you know, like that is the beginning and then, oh, it's overexposed now there. It's a bit, oh. a bit better. My light is getting too close, no, but I'll no, go no, in. Don't, don't touch. That, it's... That's a bit better, but I'll go in with, um watercolor on that but that's when i paint outside and i don't have a lot of time that's how i end up doing it so after what you take a photo and you will add the color after in your studio oh no no i do it all there i do it okay. all when i'm out but i i do a sketch then i do a drawing and then 
um, you know, an ink drawing, and then I go in with the watercolor. And it oh, just, right. it, it makes it a little bit quicker. Because a lot of times I like oh, to do tiny I paintings. Of... How long do you take for this kind of drawing on, on, on site, on location? For the, for the tiny ones? Yeah. Or for, if I'm doing mm -hmm. oils, I can be out there all, at, all day. <laughs> um, yes. But if I'm doing one of my tiny watercolors, which I really like to do lately, um, it's anywhere from one hour to uh you know three or four depending on how oh, complicated yeah. the scene is and and how self-critical i'm being <laughs> uh -huh. how hard yeah. i'm making it on myself that's another story yes <laughs> and what are you standing sitting do you have a stool or something sometimes i stand but usually i find some place to sit i'm mm -hmm. trying to think uh and a lot of times like, if it's rainy, I'll sit in the boot of my car. Okay. Um, and then just have the hat, you know, like the hatchback open. And and then I'm kind of I'm, like I'm outside, but I'm protected. So I'm thinking here, I'm waiting for it to dry because I'm going to remove this masking fluid. Do you either of you ever use a heat gun to speed up the drying? Um, yeah, I was I was going to, but I'm, I didn't want to. You know what? If I try to turn my earbuds off, tell me if you oh. can hear me now. I'll, I'll say, can you hear me? And if you can say yes, and if you can't say, then I'll know that I can use this, this, <laughs> this beast. So yeah, okay. can you hear me? Yes. No. Oh. <laughs> Not what you wanted me to say. No. <laughs> Is that is that annoying? Yes. Yeah, you can do this outside of the camera. You can just yeah. step away a bit. So that answers your question about uh, using a heat gun or a hair dryer. I don't because gouache is drying. It's really that's no true. Time. Yeah, so I, I don't do usually it. either for um, for watercolor. So I. You know, they say it doesn't change the paper, but I find that it sort of does change the surface a little bit. And... Yeah, I think it changed a bit the behavior of the pigments, I think. Um, they are really pushed by the hair. Um, not sure this is good for the paint. All right, so I need to stop and make the flowers. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm going in. I think it's dry enough. So All right. Don't... Oh, I say that all the time and I'm still doing the details. This is the final touch that will make everything pop up. Making a bit of shadow in the little ornaments here. So tell us, how do you remove the masking fluid? I use a vinyl eraser. Or mm. I have I have the technical thing. I think I have it handy. I can show you the thing they gave us at art school 500 years ago. What? You too? <laughs> yeah. Um, It's like a, it's a rubber. Oh yeah, I see. It looks like the rubber you use on shoes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I don't really use it, but oh here, natural pick. Here, I'll show you. Well, never mind. This is what you're supposed to use. Natural rubber pickup. Let's give it a go. I wonder if someone is using it. You can see I've got some masking fluid on there. I don't, I don't find it. We'll do a part that, yeah, it does pick it up easier. Do you see how easy that is? Like, it just lifts it straight up. Okay. But, you know, you don't need this. You can use your eraser. Just be gentle. 
Don't yeah, that's the thing. Be gentle. Or you will have a problem with your paper made here. Yeah. Yeah, that happened to me the other day. I couldn't believe it. Like I was saying, it was the first time with this with this pen that I've had a problem. And I think um, it was user error and not the pen because, and this is a warning to you, Cecile, and to anyone else who might, um, like I said, always do a test page where you where you pump it and try it on the paper first. Um, I, I didn't. I was in a hurry. And... Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, I think it was like, it was very watery when I put it down and it didn't look the way it normally does. And uh, and I thought, well, maybe it wouldn't matter when it dried, but then it did tear the paper a bit, so. Uh-huh, that's bad. Yeah, it wasn't good. All right, flowers. I'm using an angled brush because I want to go really loose with my leaves and flowers. So I think I will first go with some leaves with green, with a contrasting green from the background. And I'm using the edge of the brush to make kind of a leaf shape. So now I'm just taking some liberty from the reference because why not? I feel it's a bit too boring in the background. Let's go very loose. No particular plan. Just feeling a bit the background. You see, in the end, you will have finished before me. Me? Yeah. Oh, no. No, you'll finish. I have, I have all this stuff to do on the perimeter, which I think is going to end up being done off camera. And I'll, I'll post it, like I said. I'll post it mm -hmm. on your page, and I'll post it possibly on my Instagram. Yeah, I don't, that charcoal left, I don't know if you can see, like that is not wet. That's like a, a weird sort of a granulating texture, which is kind of fun. Um, it's very, very wet in that area. I think I said it wasn't wet, but it is. But I mean, like the granulation isn't wetness, that's actual granulation, but the paper underneath it is very wet. So I'm hesitant to do much in that area right now. Oh, feels really nice to paint larger though, I have to say. <laughs> I just, I do miss painting a little, not that this is large, but. <laughs> this is it, large for you. <laughs> but it's not two, it's not two inches by two inches either, so. Okay, I think I'm good with some impression of flow of leaves just that i don't want to go too much into details i think the star of the show is the house not the flowers yeah it's been more than an hour so i guess we have to worry a bit anyway I, uh... All right, so some white flowers here. Tapping with my finger because finger is your best friend sometime to make a subtle tap, 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 tap. Mm -hmm. We go a bit thicker here in some parts. Cool. 
want to cover a bit the edge of the house because it's, it's a bit too straight. Needs to be. And some pink. I think the pink will do everything. Yeah. Or not. <laughs> we will see I that. I think it will. <laughs> I'm brave because the magenta is really strong. No, yeah. It's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is what was missing. Pink is working. Yes, I agree. I agree with you, Gray. Um, maybe the same pink everywhere would be fine enough. Not necessarily changing the color. That would be... I love this brush for making petals and leaves. It's so cool. This is my current. Yeah, magenta is cool. Actually, my favorite color is opera pink, but this one is so fugitive. I try to avoid it. All uh, right. Yeah, it's too bad because it's such a powerful color. I Once don't have. You don't have it. Oh, I don't have a great pink. I here's. I'll show you what I do. I'm adding some gouache. Ah, you are. To my little palette. Just some white gouache. Oh, and yeah, then, white gouache is perfect. And so I've got it here. So I'll take, um, it's a very, oh, it's a, it's, I got, it's then I, off camera, I can move it on camera. You can see my mess here. But ah. I'm going to make, I'm going to make a violet that I like. So Lori loves opera pink as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a really gorgeous color. So cheerful when you, when I use it, I'm always smiling. I don't know why. I think that's going to be too dark, but let's see what happens if we add a bit of white. Those leaves look a bit too. So what I'm going to do is something very scary. So bear with me. Uh, I have a sprayer. It's kind of dirty because I'm using it all the time with paint. I want my colors to kind of fuse into each other. So I will spray my finished painting. <laughs> I'm crazy sometimes. <laughs> All right, go for it. I do that as well. Yes. Oh, yeah. that's cool. All the time because it gives some just beautiful textures Can that you, you wouldn't. Tell. It's very watery, so I have to keep it very horizontal now, or it will. Yeah, yeah. And I don't want that. I just want the colors to be a bit less um, different from each other. Yeah, I think one is good. <laughs> that's just paper and paint so even if it's a mess i don't mind uh this is what we were saying was uh let's see at the beginning is sometimes beginners they are scared to make mistake yeah but this is when you experiment that you discover some really cool interesting things make your mistakes work yeah exactly and now i made it on purpose I know it's scary, but it works in the end. <laughs> I think it's it's not bad. On the camera, you can you can tell there is shadow, and it's maybe here a bit too light. Darkening this one. Yeah. And um, want to blur a bit paint finger as i said is a very good tool i use it a lot yeah so the leaves they look more fused in the background 
Oh, thank you, Shelley. <laughs> I think that art is fun, should be fun. It is fun. If you are not enjoying yourself, do something else. <laughs> Great. So, Leslie, how long do you think you need to finish now? Oh, because you're finished? <laughs> yes, I'm done. Um, I'll probably spend another hour on mine oh. off camera just because, um, I mean, and this is the thing with watercolor for me, for my style, is I tend to uh, get a little more detailed. Like I, because of, if I cropped it, I could be close to done if I cropped it to like that. But I have all this stuff in the negative space and with gouache where you can just go on and put it in with watercolor it's it's a slower game mm -hmm. um to get those details so i probably will spend some more time off camera all right doing so you doing all that to... but i'll i'll post it yeah um, you have to post it on instagram because and otherwise... this background this whole like experiment of the um of the charcoal was fun, but I think it needs some fixing or some adjusting to, to get it to where I want it. That's beautiful details. Love the texture. Yeah, I will take a photo and post it as well. All right. So thanks everyone for attending. And next week we will be with Archana. I don't know if you're still there painting an owl and having fun with the feathers and the textures as well. <laughs> so see you next week and thank you everyone yeah, thanks for having me really bye enjoyed it bye everyone <laughs>